In America, another tragedy unfolded inside a church, a place meant for peace, safety, and community. But what makes this story different isn't just what happened that day. It's what happened long before, because the shooter told us who he was becoming. He wrote it, he posted it, he broadcast it online, and almost nobody stopped to listen. Tonight on 404 Bunker, we're asking the question nobody wants to face. Why do we keep missing the red flags? And could artificial intelligence, yes, AI, be the tool that finally stops tragedies like this before they begin? On an ordinary Sunday, inside a church, lives were shattered. The attacker entered a place of worship, and within minutes, everything changed. We're not going to name him here. Giving shooters the spotlight is exactly what too many of them want. What matters isn't his name. It's the path he took to get there, and why nobody interrupted it. The victims, ordinary people, just like you and me, deserve to be remembered for their lives, not for the way they were taken. And for their sake, and for the sake of every community wondering if this could happen again, we need to break down the patterns that led here. Long before he ever picked up a weapon, the shooter was leaving breadcrumbs online. At first, it looked like anger, angry rants about the world, about people he thought had betrayed him. But over time, those posts changed. The frustration hardened into obsession. The anger turned into planning. He wasn't hiding it. He uploaded a manifesto, in pages of it, each line angrier, darker, more violent. It wasn't the kind of thing you could mistake for a joke. But here's where it gets even more chilling. He fixated on other shooters. He wrote about them. He studied them. He idolized them like heroes. He treated their attacks like playbooks, dissecting how they did it, the same way someone might break down a sports game or a movie script. That's one of the biggest warning signs there is. When someone moves from being angry at the world to idolizing killers, that's when they've crossed the line into something dangerous. And the craziest part? This isn't new. Over and over, we've seen attackers study the ones who came before. The Columbine shooters, the Virginia Tech gunman, the Buffalo shooter. It's a cycle. Each tragedy inspires the next because the internet makes these men infamous. This is where society fails. Because when someone posts about wanting to hurt people or glorifies others who did, that should be a screaming red flag. If you or I saw those posts, we'd feel the alarm bells instantly. So why didn't the systems that track everything else from the shoes we want to buy, to the vacations we dream of, flag this one. To understand how someone gets to this point, you have to look deeper at mental health. We live in a world more connected than ever, but also more isolated. People spend hours online, posting into the void, but never truly being seen. For someone in crisis, that isolation is fuel. What starts as pain turns into bitterness. What starts as loneliness turns into rage. And the internet, instead of pulling them back from the edge, often pushes them further. There are whole online communities that validate the worst thoughts people have. They say, you're right to be angry. They glorify violence. They celebrate past shooters like celebrities. And when someone in crisis finds those communities, the descent accelerates. This isn't about excusing what he did. Nothing excuses it. But if we want to stop the next attack, we have to admit, untreated mental health crises mixed with toxic online echo chambers create a deadly formula, one we've now seen play out too many times. And here's where the conversation takes a turn. Because none of this was hidden. The posts were public. The manifesto was public. The obsession with past shooters, public. Artificial intelligence, the same technology that recommends your next YouTube video that can predict when you are about to buy a new car, could have seen this. It already reads our words, tracks our patterns, and builds profiles of who we are. So imagine if we trained AI not just to sell us things, but to save lives. Imagine a system that could flag violent manifestos as soon as they're uploaded. A system that could recognize when someone's timeline turns from angry ranting to studying mass killers. A system that could alert law enforcement before tragedy strikes. The truth is, this isn't science fiction. The technology already exists. What's missing is the willpower. The decision to prioritize public safety over clicks, over ad revenue, over convenience. Of course, it's not that simple. There are real questions here. Do we want AI scanning everything we say? Where's the line between free speech and public safety, between privacy and protection? But here's the uncomfortable truth. If AI can predict what kind of music you'll like next, it should be able to predict when someone is about to commit mass violence. 
And until we demand that kind of accountability from the platforms and the technology that dominate our lives, we'll keep reading the same headlines. Another tragedy. Another shooter who told us exactly what he was going to do. And no one listened. So here's the challenge. Are we ready to have that conversation? Are we ready to admit that AI could be more than just a shopping tool? That it could be a life-saving one? Another church, another community torn apart, another shooter who left his warnings online like breadcrumbs, ignored until it was too late. If we want a safer future, we have to start paying attention. We have to demand that technology serves more than profit. And we have to listen when people show us who they are becoming, because every ignored red flag today is tomorrow's headline. This is 404 Bunker. Stay alert, stay aware, and let's demand a future where no one has to say we should have seen it coming.